When was the last time you were shook by the fact that unreached peoples are drowning in God's wrath? They think they're just swimming downstream to the next life, but you know they are paddling to a waterfall that plummets to an eternity without Christ and moved with compassion. You want to take action, and it so happens that you have the one message to save them. The life preserver, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And standing on the banks of safety, you think, well, maybe they might believe. But your knees start knocking because this person doesn't want to hear you talking and their hostility is rocking you. And you begin to remember that sharing the gospel comes with a heavy price. Number one, your comfort. And maybe number two, your life. So out of fear and pride, you try and try to do missions on your own. Forgetting the counsel of your faithful local church back at home, you water down the message. Make it a little more light. And you toss this twisted life preserver with all your might. Because after all, with your insight, you know you can pitch it just right, but it doesn't reach that person. And they'd be ruined even if they did accept it. And so you just watch your efforts float completely ineffective in the breaking waves. And you realize how inadequate you, by yourself, are to save. Inadequate, not sufficient. How do you respond? Do you doubt like Abraham, an old man whose descendants were promised the land, yet he thought, how could I have a son? Do you tremble like stuttering Moses who thought, how could I speak deliverance to Israel, to Pharaoh, to anyone? Are you undone and you want to run, run away from the place God is calling you? Like those Israelite spies who saw Canaan through the lenses of fear and so they gave a bad report. Do you resort to your own strength like Samson? Are you doing your own thing, hiding like a king camping out in the cave like David? Face it, we can't save ourselves, much less the nation's. We're inadequate, like Israel trying to get themselves out of exile. We are inadequate, like the prophets calling them back. But God gave a ram to a wrinkly old man so his son Isaac would carry on his plan. Yes, blessings to the nations would continue on, but God delivered Israel out of Egypt. Check the hand of Yahweh, glorifying his own name, mighty and strong, but God crushed the heads of his people's enemies and defeated all their foes, but God sent a greater David, the greatest prophet, to end his people's spiritual exile, to end all their woes, and we... You and me, like them, were dead in our sins, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived, carrying out the desires of the body and of the mind. We were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by sending him as the sacrifice to pay the price for the sins, for all of those who would turn from their dark ways and trust in him for eternal life. And after Christ was raised three days later in power, he said, he told his disciples, take this good news to the nations. He'll be with us every hour till the end of the age. Yes, we, God's people, are inadequate, but God, we trust. Trust is the one who saves. See, there are no mighty missionaries, just a mighty God. So we give up the facade of self-sufficiency. We refuse to mess with God's word or engage in any kind of trickery, hickory, dickory. Stop. We ain't got to be clever or cute. 
We just got to trust God's spirit to do what only he can do because we know that God buries his workmen, but he will continue his work. And gospel seeds we plant might just lie in the dirt until we do, but God might just make them burst through the ground then. Brothers and sisters, we're trusting that he's sovereign. We're walking by faith, not by fruit. And though like every other Christian, we feel daunted to share the good news, we'll pray like the early church in Acts 4 and we'll ask God for more. More boldness, like the Christian publishers in Egypt, more boldness. Like, like Paul in Ephesians 6, we'll ask God to put the words on our lips so that all the nations might enjoy the fact that he exists, relying on his, relying on his spirit, brothers and sisters, don't forget that this missionary task can feel like a gauntlet. But God is the one using the foolish and the weak. So we pray the gospel, we send the gospel, we take the gospel to the ends of the earth undaunted.